All right, so uh, in today's tutorial, we're going to first talk about deformers uh, pretty quickly. And then from deformers, we will go into NURBS. And how you can use NURBS is uh, kind of a separate tool if you're looking to model some more organic type shapes. Um, and we'll kind of go through how those could potentially help you moving forward. Um, so let's talk about deformers first, and we'll just kind of get that out of the way. It should be fairly quick, and I'm not going to go through you know too many details on those. Um, so what I want to do is just create um, a polygon first. So we'll just use um, a cube, and then I want to bump up the subdivision. So if I go down to my inputs and my subdivisions, we'll put this at like uh, 10. We want quite a bit so that we can actually see how these items are going to deform. I'm going to blow it up a little bit here too and just let it sit on top of my grid. Okay, so Maya has a bunch of kind of preloaded deformers um, which could help you get certain shapes that might be tougher to model kind of vertice by vertice or with the face tool or things like that. Um, and that'll help you make these new organic type shapes. Like if you wanted your model to twist or squash or stretch, Maya has these nonlinear deformers, which are already built right into the program, um, which could really help you out with that. So let's take a look at them. They can be found if you're in your modeling tab over here, up on the deform options. And then in the second section, it's this first button right here. So you can see there are six preloaded um, nonlinear deformers. And we'll just click through each one and kind of show you what each of them can do. So you want to make sure that whatever item you have created, so if you have a cube, you need to bump up the subdivisions. If you leave it at that zero subdivisions or one subdivision for each side, um, the deformer won't necessarily work. So just make sure that you're bumping that up. You don't have to go to 10, um, but the more subdivisions you had, the cleaner this model will look. So in here, I'm just going to click on bend. And you'll notice that my cube, then uh, it turns pink. So that means that this bend deformer has now been applied to it. And over in my inputs, over in my channel box, you can see I have this bend handle. And then underneath that, I have my inputs and I have bend one. So if I click bend one, you'll see a couple of new options that pop up. We've got our curvature and we've got our low bound and our high bound. We're gonna leave the envelope at one. So if I were to just click curvature, and then over in my viewport, if I just use the middle mouse button, I can click down and you'll see that it loads up those two little arrows and I can just go left and right. So if I go to the right, you'll see how this item is starting to bend. And if I go to the left, you can see it that way as well. So you can kind of play with that and see how this is really starting to work. So if I go over to the right and I say I leave this around 43, now I can mess with my low bound or my high bound. So if I change my low bound here and I go to zero, you can see what it's doing to the bottom of my cube. If I go too far, you'll notice my cube stops deforming. Um, that's just because it's, you know size-wise isn't going to go any longer, but you can see that deformer then kind of pop out of the cube. That's okay. You don't have to worry about that. So if I bring that back here, and then I go make the same change on the top, I can change my high bound and I can straighten things back out here. So you can get some really interesting shapes really quickly um, just by using that bend deformer. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the bend deformer. And there's two ways that you can go about deleting a deformer at this point. Um, so if you want to move your item now. So say you like how that bend deformer is gonna be. This is the item that I now wanna use. And I try and move that deformer out. You can kinda of see what happens, right? It deforms again, um, except it's getting messed up. So we had set this nice shape, but as I try and move this away from the deformer, which is this pink um, line right here, the item's getting all messed up. My cube is losing its shape. That's because this deformer is only working in this space that we could kind of preset it at. So if I move this back, you can see how that's now going to change my item. And if I try and go through the deformer, it's going to mess everything up and it's going to reverse it eventually. But let's say I liked how this looked right here. 
and I wanted to use this in my actual scene. You have two ways that you can go about doing it. Um, the first option would be to just duplicate your, your object. So if I just hit Command D or Control D, I've duplicated my object. I've got a new cube, and I can just move that off to the side. Now this new cube won't be affected by the deformer anymore. And I'd be able to go ahead and use that um, in my scene. And then I could just delete these other ones. The other option for you is to click your cube and go to Edit, Delete by Type, and History. By deleting the history on the item, we've taken that deformer out and we've gotten rid of it. So now I can move this cube around and you can see nothing's going to happen to it because we've gotten rid of the deformer. If I were to undo and get that deformer back, let me just undo a little bit more. Okay. So if I had that deformer back here, if I were to actually select the deformer, now I've only got that deformer selected, and I click D or uh, click Delete. Sorry, you'll see that it's going to get rid of that deformer, and my cube is going to snap back to its original position. So that's how you can kind of adjust if you're going to keep that shape, how you would want to do it. Um, you would need to actually duplicate it or delete the history on it, or else as soon as you move it away from the deformer, it's going to change what you had set up. So I'll click this again, and we'll go talk about the next one. Um, in nonlinear, the next deformer is a flare. Same idea, you can see that flare deformer kind of take shape around our cube. If I go over to my inputs and click flare, I've got all these new options here. So we've got envelope, which we'll leave alone. We've got start flare and the X axis right here. Start flare and the Z axis like this. End flare and the X axis, so I can tighten up the top. And end flare and the Z axis. So we've got some different options there. And you can do a curve in here so I can mess with the curve and I can get kind of a shape that tucks in or pushes out. And then you can also change your low bound. Or your high bound. So you've got some cool options with the flare. And you can mess around with that one now too. So I'm going to delete that. Next one is the sign. So with that one selected, if I click four, you can see that here's that deformer right inside of our cube. And for this one, if we change our amplitude, you can kind of see we get this little bit of a wave pattern, right? So if I set this out a little bit here, and then I change the wavelength, you can see how it's gonna kind of mess with this item. And then you can go through and you can try some of these other ones as well to see what different changes you can make. So if I just change the offset after I set a little bit of wave up, you'll get this little pattern right here. Which who knows, maybe you'll ever, maybe you'll sometime need to use something like that in your scene. Rather than setting up a full animation for it, you can just use a deformer and uh, it'll just instantly happen for you. Okay. So delete that one. The next deformer is the squash. Um, if you've watched any of the other tutorials or if you plan on it, in the 3D animation tutorials, we talk about how to set up and rig a bouncing ball. We use the squash deformer to do that. Um, so this would be in there. So if I go into my factor, you can kind of see that squash that's happening here. Actually, let me delete my cube and load a sphere. And we can talk about the squash and stretch which I, with a sphere because you'll probably more used to seeing a bouncing ball. So I'm going to go back into my deformers and load a squash. And then if I change my factor, you've got it all stretched out. And then if I go the other way, you can have it squashed down on the floor. So that's a nice little thing to have. Okay. I delete that. The next deformer in here is the twist. So if I click it, you can see that deformer that wraps around. 
and then I can change my start angle. And you can see how that topology is now twisting around my sphere. You can change your end angle as well. Now, since I only have a sphere, if I were to turn this off, it wouldn't look like anything's happening. Um, with a cube or some other shape, you would really be able to see this a little bit better. So let me load a cube back up and change my subdivisions back up to um, 10. And I'll scale this again. Okay. So if I go back into my deformers and do that twist, you should get a better idea here. There you go. So you can start to see that twist that's happening. And you can change your end angle as well. You can really tighten that up, or you can just get a nice little basic twist in here, which will create a nice little shape. Okay. And then there's one more, which is the wave. So with the wave, if I change my amplitude, oh, let me change my wavelength first a little bit, and then change my amplitude. You can kind of see what's happening with the wave tool. So you'll just create this wave effect on your items like that. If you change the offset, you can kind of see what's happening there. Change the drop off a little bit here too. There you go. So you can get a pretty interesting shape with the wave tool as well. You can kind of see that fluid shape that's happening up on the top right there as it pulls in and out. Okay. So I wanted to just go over those fairly quickly. Um, the deformers are all there for you. They're in this, if you go into deform, down to nonlinear, and then you've got your six options right here. Um, I personally don't use them a ton, but they can be really helpful depending on you know what you're trying to animate, what you need to create. And they're just a, a useful tool to kind of have in your back pocket and to know that they exist because at times they might save you um, a lot of energy if you're, if you're trying to build a certain type of model or you need to get a certain type of look or design. So remember that they're there, go mess around with them, get used to what each one can do so that later on in, in your life or in your career, if you're planning on modeling an environment, you could potentially use them um, to your advantage. The nice thing about deformers, and the last thing that I'll really talk about, is that they're completely keyable. Um, so if you wanted to make any keys set on a flare or a squash or anything like that, you can. Um, and then your shape will start to deform as you go from you know, your first key to your second key. We would see that transition start to happen. So it's really nice that they're um, keyable and you can animate with them as well. Okay. So now that we've talked about deformers, um, I want to then break into NURBS. So with deformers, you can get some pretty cool organic looking shapes, right? Um, and another way that you can get these different organic looking shapes is by using NURBS um, to help you build your base models. So I'm gonna delete my polygon cube. And here, I wanna talk about NURBS. So if we go into our first little panel right here, it's the curves and surfaces panel. And in here, all of these items are gonna be your NURBS. So at the beginning, we've got some different squares. We've got a circle and a square. If I click my circle, you can see that it's just this 2D element and it's just a 2D little square, or a circle, sorry. So I'm gonna delete that. The next one is just a square, same general idea. Moving down the list, we've got some different curves, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But then over on this second little part of the shelf, you've got a NURB spear, or sphere, you've got a cube, you've got a cylinder, a cone, and a plane. Um, so very similar to what we have with the polygon primitives, um, which we've been using up till this point. But now you also will have NURBs kind of in your back pocket as well um, to help you create some different organic type shapes. So let's just talk about um, a couple of these first. Let's load a sphere into the scene. So if I click this NURBS sphere, and you can either select it right in your shelf, 
or you can go to create NURBS primitives sphere. Okay. So now we've got this NURB sphere and it's loaded in our screen and it looks pretty similar to a polygon sphere, right? Um, but there's a lot of little differences that kind of come into play with this. So with this selected, there's ways to make different adjustments on our shape. If I right click, Normally we see vertex and edge and faces and UVs and all of that when we go into this. NURBS are going to act a little bit differently. Um, so the first one to go into is hull. So over to your right, click on hull. And you can see this new little kind of wireframe shape that loads around our object. So if I were to select any of these um, almost edge loops in a way, you'll see that the hull changes color um, and we also get these different vertices that highlight on that hull. So now if I go into like W and I start to move those down, you can see how it's adjusting the shape of my sphere. I can also just use R and I can scale these things in and we can really easily start to change the shape and have this organic fluid looking model. Okay. So the next thing that's going to be different about NURBS compared to polygons is that with NURBS, all of these little um, kind of separate faces are actually made up of patches. So if I right click again and I go into this control vertex, you can kind of see how we can make changes in here. So before, we had that hole that was loaded around this object, but now I've got these little vertices which pop up um, all around the model. So if I were to select any of them, I could select a bunch, and then I could move them around, you'll see it's gonna give you a similar shape, it's gonna do similar things to what the hole did, um, but you've got a little more flexibility because you can just select one at a time, you can move those in, and you can start to kind of manipulate what this object is starting to look like. Okay, so we've made a couple little changes to this object. And the next thing to talk about is how these NURBS are really put together. Um, so if I select this and I go over to the right, under my inputs, I've got some new options in here, right? So we're used to seeing subdivisions in this spot, but it's gonna be a little bit different when we're talking NURBS. So I've made some changes to this original base sphere. But if I go to my start sweep, at. Let me actually uh, delete that sphere and just load a new one. Okay. So I've got a new sphere that's now loaded. And if I go into my inputs, my radius is just going to change the shape of the sphere. Or the size. My start sweep option, which comes next. If I open that up, you'll see how it kind of opens up this sphere. So normally, we're used to all those edges being connected. We're used to all the vertice vertices being merged together. That's going to act a little bit differently when we're talking NURBS. Um, so this item can be opened up like this. And if I change my end sweep, I could potentially have it go the other way. And that's because NURBS are put together with patches. So each of these little items is a patch. And I can just close that back up. So scrolling down a little bit more, you've got your sections. So if I change my sections, you can see that's kind of like adding subdivisions like we used to do with our polygons. And we can also change the spans, which is gonna add subdivisions going horizontally. So in a lot of ways, NURBS will act similar, they'll look similar to a polygon, but they just have different traits and elements to them. Um, which make them stand out. So let's talk about a few other little things. So I've set this back um, and now I want to cut this object in half. So we're used to using edge loops when we are talking about polygons, right? We, we go through, we insert edge loops to help us change the shape and to help us change what that object is looking like. In NURBS land, we want to use what's called an isoparm. So I'm going to right click and up on top, you can see where it says isoparm. If I click that, now, anywhere I select 
on my NURB, you'll kind of see this new red edge loop that wraps around our object. So if I let go of that somewhere, you can see that it's going to make this yellow dotted line that wraps all the way around our object. But if I click enter, it won't actually stay. Um, so our insert edge loop tool would actually put that edge loop around, right? And we would have new vertices and new edges and new faces that have been created. The isoparm is going to act a little bit differently than that. So if I select it and I just put it in the middle of this sphere or wherever you guys want to put it, um, and then I want to go up to, to surfaces, which is right up here. And I want to go down to detach, which is about halfway down your screen. And when I click detach, all of a sudden, both of these objects are going to be separate from one another. So I've got my top, which I can just pull up a little bit and like scale down. And then I've got my bottom. And both of these spheres um, are still NURBS, but they've just been split. And they split right at that isoparm that we went in and we created. So now that we've split it, how can we kind of put them back together and create a new shape that can be manipulated. So if I select both of these items now, I go back to surfaces, and this time I'm gonna to go to attach. So rather than detach, which was two down, I'm gonna to go to attach. And you'll see that this new object has been created. If I click W, I can pull that off to the side. And here, we've now got this new shape that matches up and it kind of fills in the gaps from what we had um, based on those original NURBs that we had just built off of. You can see that this new NURB for me is black compared to the gray shader um, that our other item has. If I want to change that, I can go to surfaces and all the way to the bottom, just reverse direction. You just need to change the way that the normals are facing um, on, the, on that NURB. So now it looks like we've just gotten this new object out um, and it kind of acts alone, right? I can move it around, I can scale it, I can do whatever I want to this. But in reality, it's still being controlled by that original NURB that we had created. So if I were to select either of those um, kind of components on our original NURB and I moved them around, you can see how they are also changing the shape of that NURB that we had created by using the attach tool. So I can close these up and it'll tighten it. I can keep going. And we can get some pretty cool looking shapes in here now just by using those NURBS. I can select the other one and I can make changes there as well. I could scale that down and you can see how that's gonna adjust it. So we've got a lot of flexibility and we can create some pretty cool shapes um, just by using different NURBS like that. So similar to what we talked about with the deformers, if I actually wanted to use this item, and let's say I liked how this NURB looked, I want to use it in my scene, um, I would want to either just duplicate it, so hit Control D, and now this new one won't be affected, so you can see how it's not moving, won't be affected by that original control NURB. Or you can go in and you can delete the history on that item as well. Either of those will work fine, completely up to you. Um, so I'm going to delete this extra one I had created right now. So you've finished your NURB model. You've got it looking exactly how you want it. And now you actually want to go in and create it and turn it into a polygon. Um, because in reality, you want to continue to do your UV texturing and your lighting and your animating with polygons. Um, but if you want to model with a NURB first, you can, and you can still convert it into a polygon form from there. So with this second one selected here, I'm going to go to Modify. Almost to the bottom, it says Convert. And this top option is NURBs to Polygons. I'm going to click this little option box that's right here. And in here... I'm going to deselect the attach multiple output meshes. We'll use that later. And then scrolling down, I'm going to click this control point button. That'll get rid of some of the other settings that were popping up. And then I can just click tessellate or apply. 
And what happens is we get this new model that's been created. And I can pull it off um, to the side. And here, we've now got a polygon model. So this item over on the left, or over on the right that I've selected is polygons. So compared to the NURBS, which we've been using before, we now have an item that's controlled by polygons. It doesn't look exactly like this NURB does, but that's because it's not smoothed out. So if I were to click three on it and see the smooth preview, it'll match up pretty much exact with that NURB that we had been using from before. And that's pretty cool. One of the other things you'll notice is your selection handle may not be centered on that object. If it's not, you can just go to modify and center pivot and it'll then center that selection handle. And the next thing that you'll notice is that that original NURB is still going to affect this polygon. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can still go in and you can make any changes that you need to make. But what's nice is once you get all of that done, you've got like a polygon model or whatever and you can just duplicate that out or you can go to edit, delete by type, and history. And now that original control NURB won't affect what's happening with our new polygon. So I, then I could go in, I could delete those other two NURBs. I've created what I needed to create. And here I've got this nice looking polygon model which with clean topology that I could use in my scene. And we were able to get this kind of organic fluid shape pretty quickly by using NURBs. So I'm going to delete that and we're going to talk about a different style of NURBs and that's going to be this NURB cylinder. So I load the cylinder up and you can see how it's different already from a normal NURBS polygon cylinder. It doesn't have caps, right? So there's nothing on the top or the bottom. It's just these patches that kind of wrap around the outside. If I were to go into the inputs, we've got the same options that we had for the sphere. So I've got my start sweep and my end sweep. I've got my sections and I've got my spans. So I want to load this and just have it be at two spans. That'll work for right now. And then I'm going to go into uh, my control vertex mode. So I'm going to select those middle vertices. So just the ones that wrap around that middle edge loop or isoparm. And I'm going to click R and I'm going to scale this down a little bit and just kind of tighten that up. Okay. So once I have that done, I want to rotate this and I want to um, kind of turn it to face this other direction. So I could click E and then I can start to rotate and you can see over in your channel box that it's going to be that rotate Z. I could potentially just type in 90 there and it'll flip my object on its side like we want. Um, but if you prefer to um, rotate manually, you can. Um, but one way to make it easier for you, after you click E, if you hold down J and then start to rotate, you'll snap every 15 degrees. So um, you can see I'm at zero. If I go once, I'm at 15, 30, 45, 60, and so forth until you get to an exact 90 degrees. So you've got two different options there on how you can kind of start to rotate your material. Okay, so now I've got that here. I'm going to duplicate it. So Command D and just push it a little bit to the right. So now I've got my two cylinders here, my two NURB cylinders that I created and then duplicated. And what I want to do is create some different isoparms so that I can actually connect these and build a shape in the middle of them. So on my first cylinder over on the left, I'm going to right click and go to isoparm. I'm going to select and just grab roughly the center of this thing. It doesn't have to be exact and let go. You'll see that it creates that yellow line which wraps around. That's our isoparm. And then from here, I want to go to curves up on top, right next to surfaces, which we had used before. And down to this third option under edit where it says duplicate surface curve and just click that. And now you'll notice you've got a new selection handle because what we just did is we created that edge loop or that isoparm which wrapped around our object and then we can pull that out and we can move that as if it's its own separate component. 
So I created that there. It's the same exact size as the isoparm wrapped around that cylinder. And I can pull it out to the middle. I'm going to do that exact same thing to the other side now. So I selected the object. I went to isoparm. I just clicked kind of roughly in the center. I went to curves and duplicate surface curves. I can modify my center pivot. And then I can push that into the middle as well. Okay, so now let's say that I wanted to create a, um, a model in between these two cylinders which would hold this form. So we've created these two new isoparms and we could tell Maya that we want to create a form or a new object that will kind of curve down and keep um, its width the same as those two little isoparms in the middle yet still connect to each end. So in order to do that, I want to create two more isoparms right now. So if I right click and go back to isoparm, I just want to set one on the very edge of each cylinder facing in. So I'm going to put one right here, do curves and duplicate surface curves, and then you can just leave it alone. And then on the cylinder to the right, I'm going to right click, go to isoparm, click right on that edge, curves, duplicate surface curves. So now I've got four different um, isoparms or curves that I've created that kind of sit in with these two cylinders. Still have cylinder one and cylinder two, but then if I go in, I just want to click my, my um, new duplicated curves that I have. So if I click on the edge, you can get it. If you want to select both and then just deselect the entire cylinder, you could do that as well. But go through and select all four of these curves and nothing else. Just like that. All right, so now I've got those four curves selected, those four isoparms that we had created. And I'm going to go up to Surfaces and click Loft. And what you'll notice is this new cylinder has now formed in between the pre-existing ones that we had created. Um, and it's taken the shape of those isoparms and that we had turned into curves that we had adjusted and kind of lined up in our scene. So it starts, it connects at the edge, it wraps down in, and then it, it blows back out and connects to the other cylinder. Um, my shader, my normals need to be flipped, so I'm going to go to surfaces and reverse direction. And what's cool about this now is if I were to grab any of these edge cylinders and click W, I can move it. And when I move that cylinder, you'll see that it's actually going to change where that middle cylinder is facing as well. So that middle one that we created with that loft tool, I can do some pretty cool things with. And we'll just go with like a random rough shape like this. But that in between cylinder that's been created is going to connect those opposite sides as long as we just move those couple of cylinders. So let's say I like this shape and that's what I was going for. I want to show you how to cap one of these sides off. So a normal cylinder that we're used to always has caps on each end. If I were to right click on this cylinder and go to isoparm and set that isoparm right at the edge of this cylinder And then what I would need to do is go into um, my surfaces and click planar. And by doing that, you'll notice that Maya has now created this cap that sits on the edge of this little tube shape that I've created that fits in perfectly with that isoparm that we had kind of set up beforehand. So I wanted to show you how to do that, but I'm actually not going to keep the cap on. So I'm just going to delete the cap. Okay, so we've got these two cylinders that we had created originally. We've lofted that shape that kind of wrapped in between them. Um, and now let's say that I want to take those and I want to turn them into polygons together. So I'm going to select those three cylinders not any of the curves of the isoparms we had created, just the three cylinders themselves. And I can go to Modify, down to Convert, and Convert to Polygons. 
Okay, so in here, I want to change my settings up just a little bit. Um, so if I were to just use control points again and click tessellate, you'll notice that it's created a polygon, which looks pretty good. If I click three, it smooths it out and it acts exactly like that original um, NURB that we had created. I can go in, I can move any of those shapes around and it'll still keep its form because it's connected to that um, original control. But the issue that I'm gonna have is that in reality, all three of these pieces, and you can see it by moving the middle one, are gonna be completely separate from one another. And I don't want that, I want them to all be the same. So if I were to click into these polygons, you'll notice that those vertices aren't merged. I could easily just go merge the vertices, but if I wanted to create one of these models that was already merged together, I could do that too. So if I select all three of those original cylinders again, and go to modify, convert, NURBS to polygons, in my little option box here, this time I'm gonna select that attach multiple output meshes button, which is right up on the top. Okay, so with that then selected, I'm gonna go down. I wanna change my type to quads because we're gonna work in quads. My tessellation method, I'm gonna put at general. And then down here in the initial tessellation controls, you wanna change your U type and your V type to be this per span number of ISO params. Change both of those to be that, and then you can click apply or tessellate. And you'll notice that we get a new model, which I can pull off to the side, and we can use as comparison. Now, it's going to act the same way. If I were to move anything from my original control around, you'll notice that it's going to move that corresponding part um, on these new polygons I've created. But if I were to move the center, you'll notice that this last one just kind of disappears. That's because it's losing its shape as soon as we're kind of disconnecting some of those polygons. In reality, this new object that we've created is already one shape. So if you were to click through it, you'll notice we don't have those three segments that we had on the previous one because we've attached those meshes together already. And Maya has created some nice clean topology for us. Um, which matches up exact with that first NURB that we had created early on. And then again, if I wanted to actually use this in my scene, I could just duplicate it, or I can go to edit, delete by type, and history, and now that original NURB won't affect it anymore. All right. So the last part of NURBS that I kind of want to talk about today, and I can delete those cylinders, is how to use the Revolve tool and how to build different shapes um, with different curves. So I'm going to click spacebar and go to my four pan panel view right here. And I want to go into my side view. So it's that orthographic view for me, it's on my bottom right. I want to go into my side view here. So I'm going to hover my mouse in there and just click spacebar. So now I'm in my side view. What I want to do is create an EP curve, which will act as kind of a, a base of a shape. And then we can revolve three, that curve 360 degrees in Maya and create our object. That'll make a lot more sense in a second. So if I were to create my EP curve, that's the third option that's in this curves and surfaces little toolbox. I've got my circle, I've got my square, and I've got my EP curve tool. So I'm gonna click that. So with my EP curve tool selected, I wanna build a little shape here that's only gonna take part on the right-hand side of my axis. So something like this. So think of this as like a piece of pottery. If you were to go and you were to grab a piece of pottery, this is the outside shape if I was looking at it from a profile view. And then I can click enter, and you can see how my curve has now been created. If I were to click spacebar, in my perspective view, you can also see that curve, which is kind of sitting on that axis, and it's up and down in that Y. So if I want to revolve this now from here, with that selected, all that I have to do 
is go to surfaces and then click revolve. And you'll notice Maya has created, based on that profile view that we gave it, a complete model that wraps 360 degrees around, um, keeping that form. I need to reverse my direction, so I'm going to go to surfaces, reverse direction, and now we can see that gray shader on the outside. And I'm going to turn my grid off, and you can see what's happening here um, with that NURB curve that we had, uh, we had created. So with this new object, we have our similar options as before. If I go over to my inputs, I have a start sweep and an end sweep. I can change my sections and I can change some other things as well. I'm not going to adjust those right now, but just know that they are available for you if you need them. So I want to move this new object off to the right a little bit and go back into my side view here. So I'll turn my grid off too. So you can see this is that 360 degree revolved surface that was created just based off of this little curve that we had created in Maya. But let's say I'm not 100% happy with the shape and how it turned out. If I select my original curve, right click, and go to like control vertex, I can now go change any part of this little piece of pottery and it'll make that adjustment over in the right hand panel as well or over on that object that we've revolved. So I can change any of these control vertices and it's going to make that difference over in my scene. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice little tool um, and you can go make those adjustments afterwards which is, which is great. So here is my new object that we've created just based off of this original curve that we set up in that um, side view. Okay, so I'm going to delete this separate object I'd created. And this time, I'll delete my curve as well. So I'm going to go back to my side view here. And I'm going to create what would act as a backdrop um, if we were to create a model. So later on in this class, we will create models and we will do 360 degree turntables so that your models kind of spin around and we can see how it's playing out on all sides of your 3D images. Um, so let's talk about how you would then potentially create a backdrop for your object to spin around on. So I'm going to create that EP curve tool again and I'm going to stay over on the right hand side of that axis and just create this type of shape right here. It kind of has a floor and it curves up to a kind of a back wall. And I did that with my EP curve tool again. So if I were to click spacebar and then duplicate this item, I can then pull it off to the side a little bit. So I'll go into my perspective view for this. So now you can see that I've got two separate curves in my Maya scene. I've got this original one and I've got curve two, which is my duplicated one. Let's say I wanted to create a shape that wrapped in between those two curves. I could select this first one, shift select the second one, go to surfaces and loft. And by doing that, it's going to fill in that gap. It's going to create that NURB, which will wrap in between those two curves um, so that we now have a backdrop that could potentially work um, for any type of scene or model that you guys might be creating that you then want to showcase. Um, this object, I could potentially move off to the side. And any changes that I make to those original curves is then going to happen in this lofted object as well. So you're always going to have this functionality and capability when working in NURBS. You can always resort back to your original base model or whatever you were using, and you can change the shape of certain things. So just keep that in mind. So if I were to actually use this um, and create models on top of it as a backdrop, I would want to convert it to polygons. Um, and that would be the same process that we've done before. You can just go to Modify, um, Convert to Polygons, and you can change that over. So last thing to talk about 
is um, how to use curves to create like a tube or a coil that might wrap around in your scene somewhere. That can be a tough shape to get um, by using like a polygon cube or a cylinder or something like that. Um, but by using NURBS, you can get it fairly easily. So I deleted what I had on the screen and I'm going to click spacebar and this time go into my top view. Okay. I accidentally turned my soft select on, so you can just ignore me for a second. There we go. All right, so I'm in my top view here. I'm gonna click my EP curve again. And this time, I just wanna create like a little bit of a spiral like this. So I've got this little spiral shape that I had created that kind of wraps around my top view. If you look at it in your perspective view, you can see that it's laying flat on our floor. So now I want to create a NURB circle, which is that first option in our shelf. It's that 2D circle. So I create that. You can just click it. And then I'm going to move it by clicking W and just kind of line it up over at the beginning of this path, of this curve that we had created. And if you click F, you can focus in and just kind of line it up over on that side. Then I'm going to click spacebar, I'll go into my perspective view, and I want to kind of rotate this as well so that it's facing up and kind of facing the same general path um, up and down as that curve that we had created. So something like that should work perfectly fine. You can kind of see how that's lined up here. So now I've got my NURB circle created and I've got my path. So if I click my NURB circle, what I want to do is create a tube that will wrap around this entire path that we had originally set up with that EP curve. So I need to select both items. I'm going to select my circle and then I'm going to select my path. I'm going to go to surfaces down to this um, fifth option where it says extrude, and I'm gonna go into that extrude option box. And then in here, you're gonna to wanna to change a couple of settings. Mine are already fixed, so you'll wanna just adjust them to match. Your first one is your style. I wanna create a tube, and I want it to be the same width of this circle that I created. So I'm gonna leave that at tube. The result position, I wanna to change to at path. Um, keeping it at path will tell me, will tell Maya that I want this tube to wrap around this curve in full and that's how I want this to act. And then I can leave some of these other um, options how they were. So tube and at path are what's important. And then you can just click apply. And what will have happened is you've now created this tube which follows the same exact path that you would create it with your original curves and vertices. I can go to surfaces and reverse direction on that. And I can click W and I can move that off to the side a little bit. And then I want to go back into my top view so we can kind of see this. So I've got my two objects right here. I've got my actual tube that I've created and I've got my path which I used as reference. If I right click in here I can go to my control vertex and I can go and I can make any then final tweaks or adjustments that I wanted to make. Um, I can go in and do with that control vertex and it'll make those updates on that final tube that we had just kind of generated. So you can do whatever you want with these. If you wanted to tighten them up and just make sure that everything was rounded out correctly, um, you could. And what else you can do, which is pretty cool, is you can also change the shape of your tube. And you can do that just by adjusting this circle that we had created earlier. So you can kind of see it in the background here. If I were to um, click R after I've selected my circle and scale this down, you can see that tube in the back get scaled down. So now it's going to be a lot thinner. I could also scale it way up and give it you know, more depth. Um, but completely up to you in what style you're looking for for your scene. Um, but you can, you can go pretty thin with this. You can go all the way down and it can look like a piece of rope or like a shoestring or something like that. Um, and that'll work really well. Once you have that shape exactly how you want it, 
you could um, convert it into a polygon and you could use it. So you'd also want to make sure that you are deleting your history. And then you can just delete your curve and your circle. And you'll end up with just this new little tube path that you can start to work with. And then if you converted that to polygons, um, you could do whatever you want with it moving forward um, and use any of those other tools we had talked about in previous lectures and lessons. So that's the general uh, tutorial I wanted to just give today as we talked about deformers and as we talked about nerves. Both can be extremely useful when you're creating more organic shapes. Um, they're not, at least nerves, aren't particularly all that helpful um, if you're creating like harder surface objects. If you're creating a chair or even like a human form, which I wouldn't really consider a hard surface object, a nerve's not necessarily the best way to go about it. Um, so I'd push you to use polygons for that still. But if you're looking to create, you know, a piece of wire or a pretty organic shape or something that's a little bit more abstract in a way, a NURB can be a really nice starting point for you because it's going to give you that fluid look that you might be that you might want um, depending on what your file is. So hopefully you took something from the deformers and the NURBs. Um, it's not something that we're going to spend a ton of time covering, but it is something I think everyone should at least know um, and just have a general understanding of how they work.